Hi, welcome to the YCP, here at Manhattan Neighbor Network, based in Harlem in New York City. Today's conversation is going to be about self-care in communities of color. I'm your host, Jaje Daniels, and here we have today... Hi, I'm Leticia. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Tim. Okay, so what do y'all know about self-care? What, what helps you um, relax after a hard day? Tim? Um, I like to go home and take a nice hot shower, mm. like an hour shower, and just relax and just reflect on my day and my goals, my dreams. And that's what really just helps me calm down and relax. I mean, probably I would say like um, preparing some hot tea and reading books, yeah. And like turning off all the lights and um, just having a few candles. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I like candles as soon as I walk in the door. I'm a big foodie person, so a nice meal. So what are, what, are, what are things during your day that causes you to have a hard day? What, what do you, is it stress? Is it you have a lot on your mind? I mean, this is a safe space. We could talk about mental health issues because this is all about spreading awareness to other people. I think, me, yeah, I think I overthink everything. Okay. Maybe something small, like I just dropped my wallet, or I lost my wallet, and I'll just... And what does that do for your mind or for your body? Do you um, get pain? Do you get anxiety? No, I get anxiety, but I don't get pain. Well, I don't even, I don't get that anxiety. I just overthink. And then three hours later, I'm better. Like, I just lost my wallet. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I'd say I like to wake up in the morning and have everything organized. I know that we'll do this task, then the second task, and all of that. And so if I wake up in the morning, I know it's going to be a messy day. I just like keep, I mean, dragging that negative energy from the morning to the night. Well, I guess me kind of stressed out is like when I think about my future um, and just like school and just, you know, things that I have to get done that, you know, I may not have gotten done. Um, yeah, stuff like that just drives me crazy. I start to get like little headaches here, weird headaches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the showers help me relax. I mean, for me personally, I'll disclose that I suffer from OCD in terms of overthinking. Mm -hmm. And like since I was 14, I would always worry about things. I would always be stressed. Well, a lot of the worry and stress came for my safety because I felt very bullied in school. So I always worried to like, what are they saying about me? Are they going to do something to me? And then me not being able to focus and like me feeling pressure to be perfect in school. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm just worrying so much about like the future and just like, you know, will I find love? How will I make money? You yeah. know, um, I'm having trouble with some coworkers at work and people at school. And like yesterday, like after doing a whole day of work, I like came home and I was like, I had more work to do but I was so exhausted I had to just I was wiped out for five hours and then after I was wiped out I like woke up at eight o'clock last night and you know I thought okay let me like do something with my night at least but besides the bad weather you know I was just like my mind I couldn't shut off my mind until two o'clock in the morning because I had so much fear and stress and anxiety that like even no, I ate dinner and even though like I made um, some art and I like tried to put on some essential oils, I was just not able to shut my mind off. I mean, me personally, I get like I got recently prescribed medication for mm -hmm. my doctor for when I need it, when I can't really shut off my mind. But the problem with it is that like I tend to forget to take it. And it's something you need to be taking in the afternoon. So by the time you get home, you're like so exhausted. Because if I took it at 11, I'm going to wake up and I can't move, you know. So, um, I mean, we all come from different communities. We all different, represent different communities. And um, I, every community has a struggle talking about mental health. So maybe we could go around and talk about, you know, how has mental health and self-care been a problem in your communities? What would you like to be seen done? So me personally, you know, I come from many communities. One community is the LGBT community. And there's a lot of struggles and oppression that we go through in our community that is not recognized, you know? How do we talk to our, if we can't even talk to our families about things we're struggling with, our identities added, they rejected us. That's something that is 
is so quiet and you can't even talk about only until you find that right therapist, you know? Or how do you talk about certain things, again, that you're struggling with, with your body, your health, your gender, your sexuality, if most people around you can't relate? So it sometimes feels like, many times feels like, a lot of my health issues is something that has to be suppressed and has to be quiet, and I have to wait until I find that right person to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So maybe, Tisha, on that, you could talk about where you come from and what you feel you personally struggle with or your community struggles with with understanding mental health. Well, I'm going to speak from the Caribbean background and from the black community. And I think that one thing they share in common is not being able to communicate if something's wrong. Like if you're sad, you don't really say, oh, I'm feeling sad or something's really bothering me. You kind of like keep it to yourself and you have to be like strong or you have to suck it up and like push on and move forward rather than some communities or some families probably sit down and talk to each other about it, but it's not promoted, I would say. It's not pushed that you sit down and speak together as a unit about what's going on. But in the same breath, they want you to seriously take care of yourself. So it's like, don't let yourself go. Uh, make sure you go to the doctor. For, for the black community, I would say, some people say, make sure you go to the doctor. Some people don't because they don't have health care. So they just try to figure it out on their own mm -hmm. for some caribbeans they believe that they can handle it themselves that mm -hmm. you can come up with your own remedy and it works you don't need a doctor to tell you what's wrong with you or how to medicate yourself you can do it by yourself i hear that a lot with a lot of communities mm -hmm. i hear it in the arab community which i'm also yeah. part of that like oh just be tough be strong keep going i remember always as a kid like i would have a certain thing that i'm struggling with emotionally mentally and my mom's like she would never allow me to take a sick day. She was yeah. like, you have to go to school, keep going. Oh, and when I say I really need a therapist, she looks down on me. And um, But I hear from my black friends a lot that like there's still this idea of like therapy being a white people's thing yeah. and not an all people's thing. And also, like you said, that you have to be strong and tough and that represents true blackness. That yeah. you like, you could overcome anything, even mental health, which is not necessarily true because some things we can't control so if you have money in the black community you will see a therapist yeah like if you're middle to like high class you would see a therapist but if you're low class and you're not going to see a therapist you're just going to suck it up now do you think it makes a difference if you had access to a therapist of color versus a white therapist um and for people might. in the community to trust that therapist it might because it gives you somebody to relate to right but at the same time it might make you feel weak that you have to go to somebody right so it's the like, shame and judgment yeah. that you go to therapy yeah okay thank you for sharing mm -hmm. um sara yeah so i come from an arab muslim um background but um i would say that the thing with like uh, expressing that um let's say um mental weakness in a way is um like the way i experience it in my family is more that if you go and share it like my mom would say you know go take some time go rest like uh not necessarily in the context you said like We'll ha we have to go to school, mm -hmm. like I know, like in the Arab, Arab community, if you, you have to go to work, you have to go to school. But um, I, I would say that um, in, my, in my case, it was more like, no, you go, go and try, I mean, to um, um, uh, pray and take time to meditate on what's going, what, you, what was going on through the whole day. And, you know, try to, I mean, um, understand what was going on by yourself without the help of anybody so that if there is an actual problem, then you can go and ask for help. That's one. But when I was in university, we were highly encouraged to go uh, to see counselors. We had a lot of counselors uh, in different where? schools, like in, in, in the university. Oh, where on was campus. the university? It was in, on Morocco, so oh, in Morocco, because okay. I went to school in Morocco. So, in um, Rabat, Casablanca? It was in Ifran. So the oh, okay. thing that made um, the university agree to spread counselors all over the campus was that because many of us were far from their families. And so it was important to have someone who can, who we can, I mean, trust and, I mean, share our, our problems with. Um, we also had a, a, I mean, doctor, but like, um, personally speaking, I wouldn't go to see a doctor, but I would prefer going to see someone like a counselor who I can talk to without like having him having some interest in giving me a medication or whatever. 
Yeah. That's the thing. But, um, yeah. It's funny you, um, so I come from an Arab Jewish background and our communities are very alike because something that I hear a lot is one, I grew up around a lot of strong Arab women mm -hmm. and they also like other communities, black, Asian, like they all say like be strong and like overcome it and keep going. But like my family all the time, external and internal is like pray to God and make your problems go away, have faith, go do some religious practice. And I'm like, I'm struggling and struggling and this spirituality is not healing me enough. This is an issue that needs to be taken care of. So it's interesting that even now we have a different, similar, similar, but different backgrounds that we still have similar struggles. But I guess it's also from perspective. Sometimes spirituality helps some people yes. actually uh, feel relieved. Some not, I understand, like some not, but like um, personally speaking, um, it's a time that you get a and into a quiet place and where you can actually meditate and meditation really helps mm. relieve all that daily stress and if you do do it on a constant basis it really helps you instead of doing it like one time right. whatever a month or whatever and it doesn't really help you um, achieve that 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 total relief i'm talking about something else is that i also feel that other i mean other people I know, either their relatives or friends, already have their problems. And I don't know if you also experience this. I'm like, if I come and share my problems with them, that's like, uh, let's say, selfish from me to, I mean, add more troubles to them while they already have theirs. That's what I always feel. And yeah, I don't know. If Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Tim, about your community? Well, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. Um, I was raised here in uh, Spanish Harlem. So, um, you know, I was surrounded by Puerto Ricans, Latinos, and black people, um, African Americans. And, um, you know, having like mental health, going to school, um, having a good mental health was important. You know, I learned that in school. And then I didn't realize um, a lot of people, you know, in my neighborhood, they resolve to drinking and um, smoking and you know other drug uh use substances but um i was fortunate enough to have my mom and my dad they um they, you know they always talk to me especially my mom um you know she's like my counselor you know whenever you know I'm, I'm going through stuff but um yeah you know she always talks to me she always tells me you know like she lets me speak my mind so i was a uh, great i'm grateful to have that um you know i try to help my other friends too that are going through stuff because like in the in you know, in Harlem and in the Puerto Rican community, not speaking, you know, or just ignoring your problems, you know, like you have to do that in order to just live your life, you know. It's considered being like tough, you know. Macho, machismo. Yeah, machismo, yeah. And um, for a while, and when I was like 17, 18, I was kind of doing that, you know, I was trying to be macho and everything, but then, you know, um, I started to realize like, you know, I'm, it's only hurting myself, you know. Nobody's, you know, trying to act tough and try to impress other people, you know, it's only hurting myself, so. Um, I started to open up more with my mom and just, you know, accept the fact that if I'm going through something, I have to accept myself. I can't just ignore the situation or whatever. But, um, yeah, you know, um, that's what I do. I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have my mom to, you know, speak and everything. And I didn't get to ask you about um, what, what do you do for self-care? Um, I tried meditating. I think I don't know how to meditate, so it didn't really work. You're right. So I tried it. I tried to sit with the candles, cross my legs, close my eyes, the whole, you know, image that they promote of what meditation is. But I just talk to people. I have my sisters. I have mm. family. I have friends. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, I was fortunate. I had a therapist. Um, I looked at it. It was fun to me. I, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like what people think therapy is. It was fun. But I just talk to my friends and family. Mm. Or I just resolve to, like, makeup, clothes, looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else that's, like, healthy. So you said a few things that, like, resonated with me. Like, one, I mean, when I was a kid, I guess, you know, my mom is an immigrant from the Middle East, and I had a scholarship to a very fancy school, and the way the school operated was, like, any issue thrown to therapy. So, like, at a very young age, I was thrown to therapy for, like, learning disabilities I had or trouble communicating because I had a list problem. Now you wouldn't even know I have a list mm -hmm. problem. And... It was kind of like thrown on me and it was very toxic at a young age to go, I like felt like I went to see 
a therapist more than I saw my dad going weekly. And it was very unhealthy, even though I didn't have the words to communicate to like constantly talk about my problems or feel like I used to feel so shamed going to therapy. I used to feel like I'm a problem child. Something's wrong with me. Like everyone else is not going to therapy. I remember going to like waiting rooms and like I'm the youngest person there and like people were like 30, 40 or 50 and I'm like something's wrong with me. Also, I didn't have like really good therapists because like when I was a kid, um, money was and still is money was an issue in insurance. So many times a lot of agencies for you to get a cheaper and insured person, they send you someone who didn't complete um, their residency yet. Um, so they don't have the most experience. Um, and I also I also like speak to friends all the time mm -hmm. now because I I mean, I have a lot of panic attacks and fears and my OCD makes me hard to stay present. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like on Facebook Messenger all the time. I'm like, oh, I feel hopeless about life or, oh, I'm scared about this or I feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel I need to constantly vent. I mean, mm -hmm. we're all different types of people with needs, but I think as a society, we don't realize that we are human, we have needs, and that we can't, man, woman, non-binary, black, Asian, gay, straight, whatever you are, even animals, like, have needs. Like, yeah. we have the need to, like, have, like, healthy touch and have someone to listen to you and mm -hmm. someone to give you empathy and someone to support you because we all drink, we all poop, we all eat, like, we mm -hmm. all need therapy. And now, like, I really depend on therapy. Like, I have yeah. a weekly therapist, but that... I mean, I depend on it because I'm going through my own struggles, which is, like, you know... These are also things that, like, a typical person might not have to deal with. Some people have to deal with mental health issues. Other people have to deal with, like, struggle with um, paying rent yeah. and housing instability or an unaccepting or an abusive family, um, you know, uh, trauma. All these things that I have to experience that, like, I need someone weekly that I'm just, like, it gets me through the week of knowing I'm getting help. Um, but also, it took me a long time to find a good therapist. Yeah. Now my therapist is LGBT friendly. They're LGBT themselves. It's free. They understand completely what I'm going through. They have resources. So I feel really understood. I feel really humanized. So yes, as you were saying, it's really important to find someone just like a friend, like yeah. who can understand you. They don't have to be exactly like you, but it does help Somebody when they're listen. more of your community because mm -hmm. you don't have to like, explain them you don't have to give yeah. them a text but you're like they're like okay i know where you are and where you're from and it's like i could help you better yeah. um also too real quick, yeah um, i feel like in certain uh neighborhoods and communities you know speaking to people is not really like you know just telling people your problems anything that's on your mind is they always say oh don't tell nobody your business or you know just be quiet my mom says that a lot yeah. Yeah, my mom, my, my mom. Don't talk about your medication. Yeah. Like I understand that because people could shame you. Yeah, I don't have a problem telling people. You know, my, you know, if I'm going through something, just speaking out. But I know certain people, they'll just, you know, they'll be kind of quiet, and you know, they'll just let their problems eat them alive. You know. So mm -hmm. talking about eating alive, what does, when you don't take care of yourself and when you don't vent, how do you react in unhealthy ways? Do you do any of you get? angry do you get frustrated yeah. do you want to like punch a pillow like mm -hmm. what it, what is the destructive ways that you've noticed with yourself when you aren't calm and collective i don't know i just start to get like angry with myself and i'll just i just start to get annoyed um i start to really just beat myself up i start to tell myself like the opposite of what i should be telling myself like mm -hmm. you know um basically things like oh you know you're not going to be successful just you know just really start to yeah, be negative myself. thoughts yeah negative thoughts um it's really unhealthy unhealthy thoughts and sometimes you know it'll it's like a domino effect one day you know if i'm having a bad day then that next day it might come again and then i start to i'll start to think yeah. oh my god you know it's been three days now four days so you know it's good to just really prep yourself when you and realize okay if i'm having a bad day it's just this day it's gonna be a new day tomorrow and i you know gotta you know re re uh, program myself mm. i i'll say that mine is like a uh double edge sword it's like um usually if i get i mean too too much pressure on myself i i cry for a while and then i feel relieved <laughs> that's how I that works too, crying. <laughs> yes i cry I'll i think everyone it. should yeah. cry yeah, nah. yeah i mean 
definitely um, that's my way of doing it. and if I'm in um, with people and I don't want to cry that's when I really feel bad because like I feel a lot of pressure on myself mm -hmm. I just want to go to a bathroom and start crying and then go back then I'm fine <laughs> Well, for me, I'd probably say, like, it happened to me twice in my life, I feel like, when I get, like, really overwhelmed. And, like, in high school, like, I was fighting, I wasn't going to class, I wasn't wearing dress code, like, I didn't care. And, like, you could see it. Like, it shows in your presentation, like, how you, how you carry yourself, mm -hmm. like, how you yeah. respond, how you look, how you're behaving, how you're talking. And then, again, when I was in college, I felt it, too. And I just didn't feel like myself. Like, mm -hmm. you could just tell, like, you're not your normal self. Like, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you eat. I think, for me, sometimes, I, I eat too much or I don't eat at all or I get like really aggressive and yeah. physical yeah. so but I learned how to control like the the violence part so I think now it just is eating I mean for me um I could get frustrated I could get really scared and get really emotional um I become too needy sometimes that could also become unhealthy mm -hmm. because everyone is going through their own mm -hmm. uh stuff but I'll give you like my secret and my tip of what I do because like you know let's say you need someone and you're working all day and like you don't have anyone what I do is I always go to the bathroom um I go sit on the toilet. So most of the time I go to the bathroom, I don't even need to go. I'm just like, and when I do and I'm highly stressed, it's hard for me. So I close the door, especially if it's like to the floor. I love it because no one could see that I'm there. And I just like close my eyes, just try to clear my mind. Yeah. And I literally talk out the negative self-talk. I'm just like, you're a failure, you're horrible, this, that, like, but I'm also aware that like, it's not true. Yeah. And I get it out of my head and I get it out of my system and I try to like calm my body and trying to be in like, I'm here, I'm alive. And, um, and like, I literally say, I like, I have like silent screams. I have silent cries. I like freak out if I need to, if I'm tired, like if I'm like, I'm tired of life or I'm tired of this or that or whatever. And if I don't have the time to go to the bathroom, I love going to the mirror and I love to like put my hands on the sink and just like calm down and like put hot or cold water and like put it on my face and like mm -hmm. the water, the sensation on your skin, it makes mm -hmm. you feel better. And also like for any people who care about like, you know, improving their skin, my father who has like experience and my mother in dermatology, like they said like one of the best things you could do is to put hot water daily on your face throughout the day because it opens up your pores and it makes it cleaner. Mm -hmm. So I always do that and I just feel more fresh and better mm -hmm. with myself. I put water in my hair and my face to just give myself a little fresh bath or I take a paper towel and I like clean myself a little bit to feel more fresher. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I also, I found recently, like I found on the street, I found something called a damn it doll. It's like, it looks like a voodoo doll and it's like taller and like you take the legs and you hit it on a pillow to like let it, you're like, <laughs> damn it, I'm poor, damn it, I'm this, damn yeah. it, I'm that, or yeah. love. I really like from movies, I love to like scream in a pillow or punch a pillow. Um, I have problems with my brother, so sometimes I just like let it out on my pillow about him. Um, so those are like healthy ways that yeah. you could let out your anger and let out because I don't think anger is completely unhealthy. It's just when you attack someone. So like sometimes when I feel weak and I feel scared in some pieces and I'm like, you know what? Everybody's messing with me. Everyone's talking this and that. And then I feel angry. I'm like, yo, I'm confident. I'm going to come in. I'm not going to let none of these people try to mess with me. I'll be like, I don't give up about anybody. And then like people are like, okay, don't mess with Zizhay. Zizhay is all that, you know? Because I had to realize, I was like, you know what? In New York City, why is it eight o'clock in the morning and I met a stranger? You don't even know me. And you always have to say something. And I'm just like, you know what? I had it. I'm just like, should I ignore this person and get angry or should I fight this person? Many times I contain it, but I'm just like, Ugh! you know, <laughs> but then I'm just like, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to make you uncomfortable because you're making me uncomfortable. So okay. in lines with that, what do we do? Um, what is quirky ways that we like let it out or something? Do we, I used to like, I don't know if you ever had the, as a kid, like those slime, um, rings yeah. or the slime and you throw it on the wall or something yeah. and you let your frustration out so like what is something you do do you like 
eat more than you're supposed to no, and cry I over actually, a movie. I actually speak to myself a lot. And I speak I'll... to myself too. <laughs> it's the best thing because you My understand yourself. My little sister is always like, are you crazy? <laughs> I know. I speak to myself all the time. Yeah, I speak to myself a lot. Sometimes I'm on the street, so I put like headphones, headphones. and I'm like, yeah, speaking to myself. I do that all the time. <laughs> Especially like I speak in my like uh, in Arabic so that like people don't understand I'm fine yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do that because <laughs> I feel like if I don't have headphones people don't think I'm crazy so yeah I just, like, yeah hey, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah um, I do that or um, I just step away from the situation like you know if, if I'm getting you know if I'm getting uh, angry in my house for example you know I'll try to take a walk or if it's in school maybe I can step out the class or just something and just take a really like a, maybe like a 10 minute break or something just really calm down you know you don't want to do something you know that you might regret you know something that i like that you said earlier was to um distract ourselves by having a hobby yeah. because yeah, if you go constantly to therapy and you go constantly talking about your problems people think that i love my mom says that like time will always provide the answer mm -hmm. like some things cannot always be solved in the moment it's with time mm -hmm. you understand you make better choices and you need to find something that you enjoy in life so like what do you do that's like fun and healing for me it's art I'm obsessed yeah. with art I do my daily drawing I have a nightly drawing ritual you know um, I I love creams and essential oils and like incense. So mm -hmm. I, I, I do a lot of art, but like I wish I was doing more exercise because I, I, I heard that actually exercise help relieve all the, I mean, negative thoughts, stress, Endorphins. anxiety. So, yeah. So yeah, but definitely art. I draw a lot. I do a lot of photography too. So um, I either chill with my friends or I go to the gym. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can't tell, but <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I go to the gym or I skateboard, um, just like, you know, from, from Harlem to like Central Park. Mm. Or I just like, I like wrestling, I like the entertainment, so I just, you know, put on some old school wrestling clips and just really calm down. Those are the things that make me calm. So. Um, I watch YouTube videos all day, Oh, cool, day. about what? Makeup, hair, Okay, clothes. cool. Um, I play the piano. Um, What's basketball. your favorite, like, beauty YouTube? I like Jeffree Star. I like Malibu Nikita, Dollface. I love um, Patrick Star. Um, Malibu Dollface, Aaliyah J, mm. um, Tiara Walker. It's like a whole list. Ivy, it's a whole bunch of people I watch yeah. every day. Do you and ever think about like creating your own YouTube? I started it and then I deleted it. Okay. <laughs> so it's like I attempted and then I just was like, nah, never mind. The key to self-care is consistency yeah. and persistence. That's what everyone tells me. Like, if you're going to do it, just do it. Don't right. overthink it. Just Don't keep care putting about it the out. Viewers. Yeah, just do it until you get to where you want to be. So I started that and then I always think about it. But I do go to the gym. I go to the gym a lot, play basketball, play sports, mm -hmm. play the piano. Cool. Um, I talk to my sister, my friends, hang out. I don't know, I feel like the regular everyday stuff, I just keep it going. So for our final go around, um, how do we spread the message about the importance of self-care within our communities and with the people around us? Just quickly. Oh yes, that um, meditation really help and give yourself time and um, understand yourself first so that if you wanna express I mean, share your problems with others, they can help you. Because if you don't understand your problems, then it's hard for the others to actually provide help. That's one. Two, if something happened, it happened. You have to move on. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, this helps you get through the hardest time in your life. Yeah, um, same thing, just, you know, just talk. Talk to people, talk to people that care about you. And also, read The Secret. That's a really good book. Yeah, so. it's the movie <laughs> that's too. A, yeah, that's a really good book and the movie too, so that really helped me too. Um, I learned this quote, I guess, from when I was in college, and he said that basically when we had um, people who helped us, only rich people were allowed to get that type of help, mm -hmm. like study guide, so don't ever feel ashamed because at one point it meant royalty. So think of yourself as royalty. Like therapists, we think are only for white people or people who have money but think of yourself as royalty so mm. you take care of yourself as if you're royal then there's no shame in getting help and then you could do everything you want to do yeah. mm. so i hope our audience here learned about some tips about self-care and why it's important to incorporate it in our lives 
Um, once again, this is YCP at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. If you have any ideas about self-care that we could share with the community, send us an email, call, text, social media. I'm your host, Zizé Daniels, and have a great day. Thanks.